In this video, we are going to discuss about one concept, one feature from Angular, which is Angular Signals. It has been introduced recently in Angular version 16. And in this video, we are going to talk about like what are the different things that Angular Signal has to offer, what are the different things that we can uh, do with the Angular Signals, how it has uh, improved the developer experience, and uh, how is the scenario with the integration with the uh, RxJS, what things has been simplified, what things we can still work with the RxJS. And uh, yeah, we will go through a code. I want to show you in a real world example how we can uh, integrate the signals and want to show you a difference that how previously we used to write a code and now with the help of signals how the line of code has decreased uh, and what are the improvements that we can see in a code with the use of signals. Uh, first I want to give you an introduction of the signal concept in Angular. So in general signal concept is not new. Signal concept was there in the Vue.js and uh, that was a, re a reactivity functionality very well. Uh, but in case of Angular, it is relatively new. So technically, signals are zero argument functions. And when we execute that function, it returns some value. We can say that signal are the special type that can be observed for a value. So it's a, what, so it's a wrapper. That wrapper contains a value inside it. And uh, we can observe that wrapper. We can observe this type. Uh, it wraps a value and it notifies the consumers of a particular signals when this value is, this value is changed. So you have a signal and uh, then you have consumers for it. Uh, the consumers that the signals have, it notifies them. Uh, the signals can be either writable or read only. So I'll come to this part when I'll show you a working code, uh, why Angular team has provided a writable and the uh, read only signals. There is a really good intention, very positive intent behind that, which actually helps in improving a code. So let's start to understand like uh, from the beginning, why we need a signals, why like this concept has been a newly introduced and what were the problems that Angular team were trying to tackle. Uh, so for this, uh, to make you understand, I want to explain a scenario that was present in the Angular's change detection mechanism. So traditionally, this is how the Angular change detection mechanism used to work. As you can see in this diagram, I have a hierarchy of components and uh, and those components holds uh, some data and that data is being uh, shared across the main uh, and uh, the many components can have an interdependency uh, with each others uh, based on the data. When any components change any data when it writes it's uh, there's a need to notify to other components and make them aware that okay i have changed something i have changed this data you have to get the updated uh, version of this data so for handling this need traditionally angular were using a zone js now zone js is like a special set of functionality which was like an eye keeper over the uh, data that a component is using and uh, what exactly zone js was doing this is what I'm telling in this diagram. So when any data has been changed, a component goes to a zone JS and it is that, hey, something has happened and you have to run a change detection. A change detection is a way for a zone JS through which it uh, updates all the data that is present, uh, a common set of data, okay, on which uh, other components have dependency. It is a way, so change detection is a way through which zone JS uh, let know all the component that you have to re-render it because the data that you are using uh, that has changed. So this is how it used to happen. Now let's see this scenario where uh, one component says that something has happened, some data has changed or some event has happened because of which uh, other components need to be updated. And now zone.js goes there and it updates all the components. Uh, if we try to apply this analogy to a hierarchy where we have a lot of components, it really becomes a problem. Uh, but with the zone.js, this was a problem that even though a component is not uh, directly dependent on that event or data, it causes an event propagation event that updates all the components. And this is not a good actually in terms of the performance, it causes a load and uh, it will unnecessarily have some extra computation. You can still improve this and that's where a change detection strategy, customizing a change detection strategy to on push that helps. But that is something a developer has to do uh, explicitly. Uh, so these are the problems that signals solve. Uh, it helps in a change detection, which is locally, whereas the zone just triggered a global change detection check, a signal based components will be scheduled for a change detection check only when a signal read in a template notifies it that it has been a change. So in a short, it allows to make an updates to a precise section of your of your UI and not the entire hierarchy of the components, not entire DOM. Reading value doesn't trigger any side effects. If a consumer is just reading a value from, a, from any particular uh, emitter, then it doesn't need to have any side effect, it's just a read operation. So this is one advantage that we get with the signals. Automatic dependency tracking signals helps in a tracking a dependency that uh, what are the data objects that are being referred in the components and accordingly it gets idea that which component is dependent on which one and uh, it basically helps in a better change detection and the re-rendering 
and ultimately saving the computation the performance so let's see the signal syntax and how to use it so for that i'll take you to my vs code and uh, let's write a code for it so this is a very simple use case scenario that i'm trying to achieve here with the help of signals i have a, a list of products and uh, i have a selected item section so it's like a product component and the checkout section where i'm showing the selected items so i want to have an add minus functionality on plus i will be able to add the items into my selected items on the minus i will be able to remove it and uh, accordingly the price of my selected items will also be derived so let's see how we can implement this with the help of signals so i have created this angular application namely signal demo and inside that i have created a couple of components and one service so it is very simple i have a products and a product and a checkout component inside a product component i'm going to show a list of component and in the checkout i will show a selected component that user is intended to check out then i have a service uh, which is handling some functionality of the uh, just uh, creating a object and i have a model which basically is a type for my product so what i'm going to do in the product component html i will simply put one section like a product section and i have an order list and uh, i'm just going to iterate over the items that i have and then i want to show the item name and the price and there will be a two buttons plus and the minus adding item and the removing item one more button i need to have for the reset product which will basically empty my selected list of products it's like a cart that where you add a selected products into a card so here that i'm referring as a selected list of products okay so let's write a code for showing that list so i have a product service so i'm just importing a product service which i have created and uh, i'll take you to the product service like what uh, exactly it has inside it so i'm using an inject function to uh, import that product service reference here and uh, then i have items and uh, i have just created some uh, list of books in my items as a product and that i'm going to show on my page uh just ng on it then i have add item uh, inside add item what i'm doing is i am going to a product service product list and then i am mutating it so before coming to this part i want to take you to product service and will tell you what exactly is there so inside a product service i have created a object product list which is of the type signal uh this signal holds a value which is which is an array of product because i want to show a selected list of products so that's why so if you see uh on the definition of this the signal so signal has a first argument which is initial value that has to be a compulsory and then you have uh, options and create signal and then you have other few arguments so i'm not going to explain about them in this video but what i want to show here is uh this signal returns a writable signal so the product list here is a writable signal type as you can see here the product list is a writable signal and when we have to convert it to a read only we can do something like as a read only and uh, this will make this a product list as a read only but here in my case i want to keep this as a writable signal because when i perform add and remove operation i want to change this product list so again i'll come to my uh, product component and there you can see the product list which is my signal i am mutating it there are three important functions which comes with the signals which are different operations that you can perform a signal which are set update and mutate so long story short a uh, new when you have to set a value to a signal in a first time or you have to discard the existing stored value and put a new fresh value that time you use a set and when you have to make a modification to existing value that time you use a update and if you have to uh, create a new value based on existing value that time you use a mutate so in the remove items i will just simply put a filter a function and uh, i will just remove uh, that item from the list so it will just update the existing product list and uh, will not create a new list but here in this case uh, for the mutate it created a new list which was a result of pushing a new item into a uh, existing item and similarly for the uh, reset products when i want to uh, empty the list of products inside that i will set a new value which will be empty and with this i will empty the product list now let's go to a checkout component and inside a checkout component i want to show a list of selected items i want to read a value which is set by the product component the via signals and uh, here i will read the signal value and will show it here so uh, i will create a product service uh, reference and uh, then inside the ng on it i will write a code uh, for reading the list uh, let's hold on here for the minute so if i have to achieve this scenario without the signal uh, i would probably create a subset or the behavior subset from the rxjs and uh, will update the values of that subset using a next method in my product component and uh, i will subscribe to that object here in the checkout component and will show it here uh, and for that i need to have dependency on the rxjs so that was what used to happen before signal was not there now 
let's see how we can implement the same use case here with the use of signal uh, with the inject i'm just getting a reference of the product service and uh, uh, the total price i'm defining just any for now uh, and then a selected product list uh, will come from the product list which is my signal okay so that i will assign it to my selected product list which is a local to this checkout component and uh, inside the ng on it i will derive a total price from a special type of signal which is computed so i talk about the writable signal i talk about the read only how we can make a writable signal to a read only but computed is again a special type of signal as you can see that it creates a computed signal which derives a reactive value from an expression so computed signal itself is not an uh, itself doesn't have any value it derives its value from the another signal so here in this case uh, what we are doing is uh, we are deriving the value uh, from the product list signal and that we are assigning to our total price because total price we are deciding based on what are the different products that are selected what are the different products that are present in our cart so uh, this dot product service dot product list and we are using a reduce function of the javascript and which has the accumulator and the current value to calculate the total of the prices of the products and that basically will get assigned to this total price so computed is a signal that derives its value from other signals and it doesn't itself has its own value now inside a computed we cannot write any value to a other signal so that's a catch uh, with the effect and with the computed we cannot write a value to a signal and there's a reason behind it why because if it was allowed there is going to be a possible side effect so that's it in this component and uh, inside a html file i just have a selected items and uh, here i'm showing the product of this selected product list uh, in the list tag so thing to notice here as i said signals are the functions we cannot simply put a selected product list like this and read a value in order to read a value we need to provide a round brackets because this is a function and in order to get something out of the function we have to call the function so that's why selected product list a parenthesis and uh, then the product name we are going to simply show here uh, similar goes here with a total price which is a computer type of signal so we have invoked a total price here uh, which will show a value so as a result we get this ui and as you can see that when i add any component my total price is changing and uh, when i will do a minus that total price will also be reflected because that item itself is being removed from the selected product list so this was a scenario where i needed a synchronization of a data between two components so what if we have a component uh, a relationship between a component like uh, parent and child so how we can do that so i have created a two more components here which is a child and parent so traditionally the way we used to have a synchronization between the components where they have a, a parent and child relationship was the input and output decorator now i want to show you how we can uh, achieve the same thing with the help of signals thing to notice here starting the angle 16 we can have this self closing tag so unlike previously we need to have a starting and the closing tag uh, we don't need that so it makes code look more cleaner now uh, okay so we are passing the count as a count we are passing the counter signal in the count in the parent component i just have a signal which i named as a counter signal which initially has a zero value and uh, on an increment operation i am just updating the value uh, i'm just incrementing a value using the update function and in my child component i just have a input type count and uh, that i will simply use here in the html file so inside a child count i will put that count and again invoke it I'll again invoke it because signal returns a writable signal as a function so yeah that's pretty much here so if i take you to browser uh, if i do an increment from the parent i can see that the count is incrementing in the parent also and inside a child also so uh, that's how we can pass a signal using an input decorator so so let's give a brief recap writable signals we can update the value of the writable signals uh, we can create a read only signals from the write table uh, using as read only method computer signals derives its value from other signals and uh, they don't have their own value and we cannot update the value of the signal of the computer signal they are read only uh, it just returns some value based on other signals computer signals are not writable signals so we cannot use a set mutate update on it so now it's turn to understand what is the effect so effects are the operation that runs whenever one or more signals value changes you can create an effect with the effect function so using an effect uh, we can have a certain set of operation that uh, we can perform when a signal value is changed so typically the effects need to be used in the injection context and the effects always executes asynchronously during the change detection process so this is very important and uh, there is there can be a separate detailed video on it to discuss like uh, how effects runs how effects execute asynchronously in the change detection process uh, so these are some use cases of the effects they are saying like the logging the data being displayed keeping the data in sync with the local storage of the browser adding a custom dom behavior performing a custom rendering on the canvas uh, but the thing to notice here is effect needs to have an injection 
context and uh, by default we can use an effect in the constructor but if we have to use the effect outside of the constructor or anywhere in our lifecycle method or somewhere else then we need to have an injection context and to create an effect outside of the constructor you can pass an injector to effect via the option so let's see in our case uh, i will put uh, effect in the constructor like this and inside that effect i simply have one instruction which is just to console log the current count and uh, by the definition of effect when i will change anything in my signal so let's see if it works uh, when i will do an increment i can see that effect function is getting executed and it is displaying the value of the signal so effect has access to uh, the signal value it can read the signal value but there's one important thing about effect and uh, about the computed signal is we cannot perform a write operation on the signal inside these two blocks we cannot perform a write of signal in the effect and we cannot perform a write of the signal in the computer so that's a thing to remember and uh, now i want to discuss about and how we can uh, make it work along with rxjs so first thing that come to a mind when we learn about the signals is does it when we when anyone's any new developer learns about signal is uh, what is the difference between observable and the signals because uh, observable also do a same stuff it is an observe we can create an observable stream and that can emit a value so the difference is in front of you signals always have a value observable cannot have a value always observable can emit their value synchronously or asynchronously so this is a major difference observable can function in the synchronous and the asynchronous manner but signals are always in the synchronous manners signals don't emit anything this is important to know they just notifies their consumer they don't emit anything and their consumer perform a pull whenever needed and whenever a value is updated in a signal that is synchronously updated in their consumer and signals have no complete set so if you don't know about like what is a complete in case of the observable when we put on when we call a next method it sets a value and it emits a something and when we call a complete that means that the image that means that this observable is done with emitting and uh, this is the final value so we don't have that concept here in case of the signals signals versus subset because uh because many developers used to follow this pattern of the updating the value in the subject using a next and then subscribing to it and reading a value which personally i also use a lot uh, but now with the introduction of the signals there are some uh, good improvements we can see in that approach signal excel in managing a local component state and are ideal for the simpler scenarios so they are ideal for the simpler scenarios where you want to uh, keep a synchronous uh, state between uh, components and you are sharing a data between them or you want to uh, notify other components depending on some event happen so they provide a state forward and intuitive way to update and track the state manage to, to track the state changes within a component if your application primarily requires managing or reacting to a local state changes then signals offer a lightweight and easy to use solution it is a very lightweight solution you don't have a dependency on it invoke the change it doesn't invoke the heavy change detection operation also so it's very lightweight and uh, for the simpler scenarios it is really ideal and you can achieve many of the things with the help of signals if your application demands extensive state sharing and a coordination between a different parts of application then signals is probably not a good choice subjects offers a robust solution for managing the reactive scenarios for example you want to read the data from the external resources you want to get the data from the api call then in that case signals is not a good choice subject is something that to achieve the extra level of control over the asynchronous nature and implement the complex things interoperability with the rxjs now to make and compatibility between the rxjs rxjs things and the signals uh, angular team they have uh, introduced two new uh, functions here which is two signal and two observable now what is the future of the signals uh, angular team they are thinking to make a component as a signal based that's why in the component decorator they are going to introduce a new property which will be uh, uh, which will indicate that whether the component is signal based or not so we can set a signal colon true which will tell that this component is a signal base traditional zone based components have eight different life cycle methods but since they are tightly coupled with the current angular chain detection model they are redundant when using signals so if we are using a signals uh, some life cycle hooks some life cycle methods going to be a redundant so also there is going to be introduction of the new life cycle methods that is being proposed so that proposed life cycle loops could be after next render after render and after render effect so this was the video to make you aware about the fundamentals of the signals i know i have not went into a very detailed parts of it there are still a lot of to lot of stuff to explore uh, like the effect so uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment and if you found this video useful at all then don't forget to give it a like thank you for watching